Tonight's meeting is being broadcast by Milford TV. There are no members of the media present. If anybody would like a copy of tonight's meeting, please let any member know at the end. Welcome, gentlemen. So first agenda item is the budget discussion and development, which I'm going to turn over to Dr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we start, I just want to make an announcement to our viewing public that there will be no school in Milford tomorrow due to the impending storm. Um, we've, we've released that information on a number of media outlets. But again, no school tomorrow and no evening activities. Is it going to uh, snow tomorrow? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> We're very hopeful for Wednesday, though. I do want to throw that in there. Uh, I'm going to read just a brief statement on the budget, and then I'm going to have Kathy kind of go through the documents that the, um, the FinCom subcommittee has in front of them, and she'll go kind of document to document to, to give you kind of a, a sense of where we started, where we are now, and then kind of open it up for discussion. Does that make sense? Sure. All right, perfect. So the Milford Public Schools is proposing a 4.9% increase for fiscal year 2017-18. The personnel contracts increased by 1,600,000 or 3.6%, and that's all of our union and personnel contracts. And the special education out of district contracts increased by 804,000, which represents 1.8%. The 3.6% plus 1.8% for a total increase of 5.4%, which would equal a level service budget. The Milford School Department used one-time funds to cover one-time expenses to reduce the level service request to a 4.9% budget increase. The Milford Public Schools, through this process, plans to reduce the number of employees by 17 through attrition for a potential insurance liability reduction to the town of approximately $314,465.73. From 2011 to 2015, there's a troubling trend emerging. Funding the Milford Public Schools compared to the state average has decreased on a per pupil basis from a difference of $1,142 per student in 2011 to $1,596.30 in 2015. Um, and that's on a per pupil basis. The aggregate would be $4,779,270 4, in two, 2011 and $6,666,148 in 2015, which represents a shift of about 28.31% in the difference from the average. A budget that reflects level service will allow us to focus on our strategic goals of growth-focused instruction, learning, and assessment, social-emotional learning, continuous learning for all of our stakeholders, and equity and access. We would like the Finance Committee to continue to support the Milford Public Schools budget and to ensure every Milford student has access to a high quality public education that prepares them for future success in college and careers. Um, some ideas about bridging some of the gaps that w w we've been talking about through this process are to return to the tradition of holding the budget harmless on the sometimes unpredictable costs related to special education and English learner programs, credit the school district for reducing the potential health insurance liability for the town, and again, we'll continue to manage these costs in the future to support the dual goals of both the mission of the schools and the fiscal management of the Milford community. I'm going to have Kathy now go through, are you going to go through the documents or the overall budget request, Kathy? Well, I'd like just to do a quick summary of when we had our last meeting to Perfect. where we got to the 4.9 so that there's a general understanding as to how we got there and what cuts we had to make as a committee to um, develop a 4.9. So when we last met, we were at 6.6, .6, and that included our level service um, education delivery of service, along with 328,000 in new initiatives that the committee and administration felt we needed to um, bring forward for um, movement for the following fiscal year. Uh, that was at 6.6. .6. Now, how we got to 5.2 on the first page of your document is essentially uh, a few changes since we last developed the budget in November. That being, um, we had two students move out of district at a savings of 122000 We had two additional retirements since our last uh, budget presentation and our copier lease uh, three-year lease came in um, at a savings overall. The committee also agreed to move forward uh, one-time costs over to school choice, or I should say uh, revolving funds, school choice, Comcast, and property use revolving. In addition, we are recommending 
two EL teaching assistants be removed from the new initiative proposal, as well as consolidating our BCBA caseload um, under the direction of the special ed director. She is recommending that we uh, reorganize that department. Overall savings by moving those expenses, 468,000 at that point. We um, also reviewed our school choice revolving and the committee has agreed to move 200,000 over to school choice for the following year only. In addition to that, the second page, to get to 4.9%, we have a uh, maternity leave that will go unfilled due to enrollment issues um, at the preschool. That comes with a savings for one year of $70,000, but we, were, we will move that position back into the budget for 1819. In addition to that, we've asked every principal to make a reduction in their overall instruction material and um, one-time expense of $5,000 each building, and that brings us to $30,000. And we would have to reduce our paraprofessional staff by one position. And uh, Mr. Consigli has proposed a uh, level two and level three mentor reorganization, not move forward with the mentors in levels two and three. And those reductions, as stated on pages one and two, get us to 4.9. If um, we need to move forward to a four and a half percent decrease in our budget, that would exist of two EL teachers proposed at 55,000 each. That would be 110,000. We would have to reduce our reading teaching staff at Stacy by one teacher. That would be 55,000. That's due to attrition. In addition, we are willing to reorganize our CTL structure and uh, another savings of 7,500. These cuts would bring us to four and a half percent. If in fact we have no choice but to move forward with a four percent increase over FY17, we would have to then move to the classroom reduction with four teaching positions. We do not know where those teaching positions would, um, would come from, but that would give us a four percent over level service 17. And just quickly before we begin discussion, I have uh, included the latest budget from our previous meeting, our chapter, or I should say our tech budget, the 155. I also wanted to um, show the committee that uh, we had a million dollars in other new initiatives that the committee chose not to move forward. In addition, the state has come out with um, the latest Chapter 70 trends. So I, I've included Milford's numbers in um, where we stand with our net school spending in our um, foundation budget. We are now 16% over with a small increase of 3%. And that is not due to the local contribution, but merely the uh, Chapter 70 increase from last year. That's essentially how we get to our 4.5%, our 4.9% proposal uh, over level service. If you have any questions. That will open it up for discussion. I will too. Go back to the first page, Cass. Okay. I'm sorry, you were going. I was going to get Mr. Nero. Oh, okay, go ahead. Please. Thank you. <coughs> First page. Yeah, I just want to understand again what you talked about. You went from <coughs> six when point, the first group budget reduction, sure. that's total out of the budget. Okay, that's so when we, when we last met, we were presenting right. a 6.66. No, no, I, I understand that part. I'm okay. not to interrupt you. Okay. Because down below you talked about choice numbers. Uh, um, the 468,000. 
local reduction increase subtotal you said that was coming out of choice if you go to the left mark move expenses to school choice there's a section off to the left yep all of those expenses will be moved to school choice in addition to another 200,000 for next year and, and what's the 200,000 yet to be it would have to be something around new initiatives or I should say one-time expenses but we're in agreement that that will have to happen to maintain the budget okay how much do you have in school choice at the moment we have with the expenses being moved at the end of 2018 our rollover amount will be about seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars after these two correct yeah, Kathy what do you mean that rollover amount I mean after these transfers correct yeah okay, so so that, that means you have almost a million dollars in there now. At the end of 17, we should have $1.1 million. That's right. correct. 500000 you're getting from, from the state, so that gives you $1.5 million. So, all right, let's, we'll talk about choice in a minute because we had, the Finance Committee had this discussion with the school department, I don't remember, Ten years ago, eight years ago, when you were when you were running two million dollars in choice money, and we said no, you need to use that for one time, one time hits, and we we uh, requested that you never get close to a million dollars. We wanted to see that number around five hundred thousand on an annual basis, so this will reduce that significantly. That's good, um, and and I'm glad that we're we're getting back to that because we really don't want you to want to see a carry. Of that kind of number um, can I speak to a little bit about that mark uh, one of the um, the school choice budget essentially funds uh, the course reimbursement for teachers uh, contract language in addition to any enrichment club student activity mm -hmm. advisor cost um, as well as our back then the Dell lease initiative so that the school choice is funding those mm -hmm. expenses now you could make the argument that they are related to the operating budget however um, I think part of the um, overall reduction or elevation in our uh, revenue is the reduction in our expenses I'm seeing a trend in the cost reimbursement program being reduced and I believe a lot of that has to do with new negotiated language that requires a teacher be here five years to be eligible to um, request reimbursement. I, I don't think we have a problem with you spending the choice money for those kinds of things, as well as what you've listed here. This was absolutely positively the right thing to spend it on, uh, in our opinion, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. One-time hits, you know, mm -hmm. new mats, new varsity Good coaches, ball. new helmets, et cetera. Um, that's exactly what we, we expect to see there. So that, that's good. Uh, I, I, I have one major issue. And I guess we could talk about it now. What we normally do in the Finance Committee when we go through annual budgets is we typically go through the, the department and take out one time adds for the previous year so you start whatever your number was minus those ads because we don't want to bring continue to bring those forward um, and so I've done that this year uh, so and I'll hand this out there are a number of items that should come out of the, the budget to start off through that I, I think they're fairly obvious uh, last year you had a surplus of eight hundred and fifty three thousand in sped which you uh, 
did not turn back to the town. You kept it. So that should come out of your budget. Middle School East, we added $107,103 to your FY17 budget to carry you through a summer because you were getting rid of FY17, so that should come out of the budget. You spent money on cafeteria tables, science kits, science textbooks, math textbooks, classroom furniture, reach curriculum material. That adds up to, I don't know, 2739, dollars about 130000 Maintenance for the middle school lease, since it's going out of business for the school department, um, maintenance and utilities about 300000 which is what was discussed by the um, reuse committee. So that was a number that was used there. Uh, I don't know what contractual expenses and, and tech were, uh, but there was a savings of 139000 last year, so that should come out of the budget because you didn't return that to the town. It was an $88,000 transportation savings, which again didn't return to the town, and the um, town administrator has negotiated a 10% reduction in electric costs for next year, so every department that, that has electricity bill is being reduced by 10%. In your case, that's 68000 So your actual level service budget starting point should be $42,399,314. About $1.6 million. Right about 1.6 million and so if we if we start there and go to here um, where, where do we play I mean I don't know how to deal with that so if you reduce your 4.9 percent by 1.6 million you're at 40 44 million seven hundred thousand That's what the finance committee would like to recommend. So, um, your, your rationale makes make, makes some sense to to a point, right? And so, Kevin just went through some some data with you that shows the per pupil spending, right? And when we look at it as as an absolute number, as Kevin pointed out, right now um, we're about a little over six million below the state average in in spending. Okay. If we look at the 2016 number that was just released, it wasn't in Kevin's data, but we're at about 7.1 million uh, below the state average. Mm -hmm. So now, if you want to take another 1.6 away from that, we're at about 8.7 million below the state average. So when we have an opportunity, when, when some of these one-time expenses we carry them over, we're not carrying them over just for the sake of carrying them over. We're carrying them over to try and close the gap on on funding um, and to meet the needs of our students. So. So I get what you're saying about, hey, this is one-time expense that shouldn't be there the next year, but the reality is we're trying to catch up. Um, so w when there is an opportunity to tap into that some in, into some of that funding, we're going to take advantage of that. And, and, and I understand that, Joe, and I think that maybe after all of these years, because this is really the first major reduction of the school budget for one-time expenses. We've never really come back to you and said, all right, team, take the money out and don't use it because... We don't want you to have it. That's not the answer. The answer is every other department does it, and um, last year it was significant dollars, and that could have gone back to the taxpayer. Um, it could have gone to the stabilization account where we pay uh, our, um, our debt, uh, of which $63 million is a school debt, uh, which is about $4 million a year in, in payment, which would, if we left that in the, in the operating budget we'd be at seven and a half million dollars which would actually impact you at six you the school department at 56 percent so you would get hit that way and we're trying to save you money in the long run and and what we would like at, to do or have which every department does is when you have surplus return it back to the tax rate and to the taxpayer because you know they're footing the bill whether we're hundred dollars less per state average on a kid or a thousand dollars a lot more, well, <laughs> a lot more. I, I understand but that's but what don't. the town can afford Joe and we're not Weston and we're not Brookline we don't have untold amounts of money but are we, are we Marlboro are it, we but, but we shouldn't are target we, we shouldn't target uh, funds funding for per student as a, as a goal we should target uh, performance you know uh, Graduation rates, uh, college entry rates, MCAS scores, 
those are targets we should chase after. Funding is, that's a good metric to see how efficient we are with our funds, but. But how, how do you get, you get there by adding math intervention specialists, you get there by adding reading specialists, you get there by adding CTLs. And that that's, all takes funding. That's fair. And, and, and I when just you look get, at when you I look get at the when you look when at that becomes a goal to reach. But but that's not that's not the goal. And, and and don't don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying spend money for the sake of spending money. I'm saying spend money because we need these resources. We need these programs. So when you look at the list that Kathy showed you, that shows all the positions we're not putting forward. Those are valuable positions, but we're not putting them forward because we understand the town can't necessarily afford all of it. But we'd love to have these additional CTL positions. We'd love to have these math intervention specialists, these reading specialists, the, the additional ELL support. We, we need those resources. Unfortunately, we don't have the funding for it right now. Um, so we're, 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 we're cutting that out. Um, but I, I think we need to t take a step back. We need to recognize that we're not funding our schools at the level that we should be funding our schools. So you could talk about cuts, you could talk about giving money back, but that's not gonna help us in the end. It's not gonna help the taxpayers in the end, it's not gonna help the residents in the end. What's gonna help them is investing in our schools. I, I have a hard time, Joe, going to town meeting with a 4.9% increase when everybody else is doing it too. I've had this problem from day one with the school department. The school department has, except for one year where they got cut by almost a million and a half dollars, has never ever come in at a, at a reasonable number that all the other departments have. And I understand that, and we, no, time out. We've advocated for it right along. Every single year we've stood up at town meeting and said, school department wants 3.6%, 4.2%, 4.5%, they want to hire five teachers, nine teachers, 12 teachers. No other department is hiring. There's been a, an unspoken hiring freeze in this town for the last eight or nine years. Okay. And so we've advocated for all of the additions that the school department asked for, pretty much. And I, I, mean, pre I appreciate that, Mark, but you and I have had this conversation. You cannot compare the school district to the police department, the fire department, and, th and let me explain to you why. We've had this discussion. How many police stations are in this town? One. How many school buildings are in this town? Five. Seven. Six. Count the shining star. How many employees are on the police department? Right. Just throw the number. It's 50. But, but hear Mike. me out. Hear me out. How many employees are in the school district? Almost a total of 700. So how can you compare those departments? And and I understand you have over the years always been very gracious, okay? But you can't compare the school district to the police department, to the fire department, to the highway department, because it's a lot easier for them to come into that number. Okay, because they're not dealing with the huge, you know, issues and problems and concerns and the educational factors that we are. We don't know. Every year we deal with this. We think kindergarten's all registered, and the next thing we know in August, our kindergarten numbers change, and here we are shifting things around. We're, we're dealing with a constant variable. And, I, and Mike, to your point, how do you, how do you teach to performance? When, you're, when, you're, when your student body changes every single year. So you talk to a seventh grade teacher and she'll say, boy, this is one of the best classes I've ever had. And talk to her halfway through her first next year and she says, man, we're struggling. These, these young kids just aren't getting it. So they're working even harder. So your, 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 your student keeps changing. Okay, so <coughs> everything is everything's invariable. It keeps changing, changing, changing. I'm not saying that crime doesn't change. But for the most part, things at the police station, things at the fire station, things at the highway department, they pretty much run at a constant. We're dealing with a variable all the time. You know, ELL, state funding, you know, programs. And, and, I, and I'm not, and I appreciate it. Again, I appreciate everything, but you just can't compare us to those other departments. You're right. I can't, we can't compare you to the other departments on a... a employee to employee basis or, or uh, a criteria that, that takes into account learning versus solving crimes. But the police department has their own issues. They try to get more money, they can't get more money. Fire department, one year actually, it was three years ago, four years ago, they had to borrow money from the police department because they were short money and we couldn't give it to them, right? So they have, everybody has their problems. Everybody has contract negotiations that cause their budgets to, to get stretched at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody tries to work it. And, and the Finance Committee tries to understand all of that and accept all of that, because we have no say in contracts. All we have to do is try and fund them. And 
the, the law says we can only increase our, our um, numbers by 2.5% a year, right? So we try to keep under that 2.5%, save a little money, um, pay off some debt, uh, try and, and do the best we can for the district because we really, I think, we do pretty well for the district when all is said and done. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes it comes a time to for reset. And, and I think um, we have to talk about this year being a reset year. So <clears throat> I certainly appreciate all, you know, everything that's been said and understand the work that's been done on, you know, both on behalf of the schools as well as on behalf of the Finance Committee. So my question for you is, is so I, I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. Is the proposal that we step back and put forth a budget, is, is the Finance Committee's position that we go forward, go forth with a budget um, for FY18 at forty-three million two hundred and forty-seven thousand three hundred dollars and twenty-eight cents. No, that was not my. That's why. That's why I asked the question because I want to make sure I understand. Was okay, so what's the position? A level service budget doing taking all of this out. Okay. Level service now, and I, you know I hate I talking about level. I service. know you do. Okay. I know. Which is forty-two million three ninety-nine and change. Okay. The recommendation from the, the finance director and the finance committee is 2% increase. <coughs> yep. So you're at 43, 247, 3. Yeah. That's where I would start to look at all of this. So, so that's As what opposed to starting at 40. No, 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 I got that. So, th so that's what I'm saying. So if we're working with a budget, right, we're working, we got to work with a dollar number. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking is it that we start, are, we, are you saying start at 42, 399, 314? No. And then go up to and and try to stay within the two percent, which would put us at the forty-three million. And then look at okay, so here's the list of things that we're trying to pay. Are we looking at, or is the proposal from the finance committee that we do that with forty-three million two hundred and forty-seven thousand three hundred dollars and twenty-eight cents? Yep. Okay, that's why I want to make sure I was clear on. Okay. And and if you can't, hmm. then let's discuss what you can't cover with the forty-three two forty-seven and change. Okay. As we normally do. I got it. Okay. And, I, and I'm okay with doing all of that, but 4.9% or 5% is... I got it. So I, I want to make sure that I understood that because I think that's what we have as a challenge, and I know it's not news to anybody here. We've talked about the fact that our student population number, the number of students we have, increases on average 20 a year for the last longer than I've been alive, okay? <clears throat> What's happened is the population that we have is becoming through state mandates, through just the demographic cha changes and shifts in the town, is becoming more expensive to educate. The new initiatives, the law changes, um, the Massachusetts Education, Depart Education Department and all their infinite wisdom and all the changes that they like to add and curveballs they throw at us on a regular basis it's becoming more expensive for us to educate. So I certainly understand where we're going here and I understand what you're looking at. That, I certainly understand where you get your math from on this. Going to a $43,247,000 and $300 and 28 cent budget, I mean that's, for us as a school department, again, I think we're all on the same page. We wanna move education forward. We want to make sure that we make it a better place to educate your children in the town of Milford. Moving to a budget at that number, um, if what you're asking us to do is to go through the exercise, to be able to understand what that impact would be on Milford Public Schools, we can, give it, we can certainly sit there and we can do that. We can go back to the drawing board and do that. I would tell you, having been through this as much as anyone here with the exception of Mike, um, it's it will borderline on devastation. And I don't make, mean to make it doom and gloom, and you know that that's not my outlook. That's not, my, that's not how I propose things. Right. I, I would tell you, it's, as you guys already know, our budget is made up of pr predominantly one thing and one thing only. You got it, it's people. So when we're talking about, when we're talking about this big of a gap, it's only going to come from one place. It can only come from one place. There's no more money to pull out of paper. There's no more money to pull out of chairs. There's no more money to pull out of 
uh, out of facility improvements. There's no more money to pull out of paint. That that those monies are we can pull them out. It we did some of that. It's like thirty grand. If we really really cut it down to, uh, we could probably get another five out of every out of every building, which gets us to sixty grand. It certainly doesn't get us to three point seven, close to three point eight million dollar gap, which is what we're talking about. It's going to come from one place, and I just I want to make sure we're on the same page. That's the only place it can come from. We totally understand, I believe. That one of the things that, that you talk about, or, or that we all know, is that personnel services is, in fact, the majority of your budget. But over the last eight years, nine years, how many teachers have you added to the list? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I agree. Significant amount of teachers. Correct. Last year, we spent... We, we authorized 340000 for ELL, which was half of what we did the year before, twice what we did the year before. Correct. There were eight teachers or 10 teachers mm -hmm. and 12 teachers. There's a problem that you need to, that you, the school department, need to understand. You in continually increase the number of employees. You're going right. to continually increase the salary. So that's it's got to come from someplace. I got it. So this okay. is what I'm saying, Mark. We can't. This is we what can't we're afford talking. It. I and. We understand what I'm saying is is that is a pr and you you hit the nail right on the head you you just pinpointed one of the two areas mm -hmm. and there's others but one of the two chief areas where education is becoming spectacularly more expensive Agreed. and it's by mandate we can't say you know what maybe we won't add it is here's but, what I would tell you we're not adding ELL programs we're not adding special education mm -hmm. programs because boy wouldn't it be great if we had this is an initiative. ELL is not an initiative. <laughs> ELL is a requirement. But, but Scott. And it's a good one, and I understand that, and it's the right thing to do. But that being said, that is a perfect example, and you, you picked a great one that's because so it is typical. a skyrocketing cost. Exactly. By the way, those numbers are up. Forget 2%. Those numbers are going to continue to grow to double-digit um, double numbers year over year. And that's not because, boy, wouldn't this be a great initiative. It's our population is becoming more expensive to educate. That's a perfect example of one of the major increases and that I, we're And seeing. I get that. So, so what do you do as a school district to, to manage that? Right now, I mean, just off from, from our perspective, yeah. Yeah. or my perspective, I guess, what's the teacher-pupil ratio? Maybe that needs to go up two or three or four per kid, yeah. all right, to manage the extra ELL students and not hire teachers. Um, that that if you're in industry, that's what you do. Okay, you make do with less, and, and you have people do more. Um, in your case, you add students to the population or students to the classroom. You, the district, not you personally. I got it. I, I, I use the euphemism. It's the royal you. Got yeah, it. the royal you. Um, we talked about the number of teachers you've hired. What about the number of non-teachers that you've hired over the? Okay. That you want at least eight or nine or ten administrators mm -hmm. right now. Above and beyond, mm -hmm. I can't even understand it. You know, it, it's just, you have the same number of uh, the same number of there's buildings, the same number of principals. There's a, sh um, there's a ton of people. There's seven schools. Nice but, but nothing. But that nothing's changed, changed so. Joe. But when you say above and beyond, above and beyond what? Well, I'm just reading from what you gave us last Right, but now, now compa time. compare that. You can't compare that to police and fire. And these other no, I'm not comparing it to anything. I'm to comparing it to Compare that to other town districts. I'm and we're not no. above and beyond. In I'm fact, we're, we're understaffed compared I'm comparing to other it town to districts. Uh, uh, other districts. We live in a vacuum. Yeah. But we shouldn't live in a vacuum. But we do live in a vacuum. Okay. So, all right, and so, if so we does every other town. They live in a vacuum. Then where's your data? Show me your data that shows we can't afford these increases. We don't have sure, the money. Because sure. all mean? I keep hearing is about how Milford's in this wonderful, this unbelievable financial condition. Right. But yet we can't afford to invest in our schools. It's, we do invest in the schools. Joe, you're 56 you're or 58 percent right of now. the budget. You're you have the largest budget in town. And, and how much of that is, is from state aid? Doesn't it, less than half. Don't say it doesn't matter because it absolutely matters. It, it matters so what? a lot. But it's half. So so to get us down. But none of the other departments get state aid. Your number. You're gonna basically it's gonna increase the local impact by six thousand dollars. That's it. We're getting we're getting twenty one thousand four hundred chapter seventy this year. So to get down to your number, it's gonna million. increase. What's that? Twenty one million. Sorry, it's gonna increase the local impact by six thousand dollars. You're telling me we can't afford more than that? Six thousand, six million dollars. Six, six million. thousand. Six million. Well, I think the other thing that's interesting too From is when we talk about school choice numbers, 
We always throw out towns like Hoffington and Holliston and Medfield, and I'm the guy that says, hey, I don't want to be compared to those towns, but if you look at what those towns spend on their schools, it's a lot more money than we do. So we get criticized because some of our students leave and go to those school districts, yeah. but yet here in our own school district, we're not willing to step up to the plate mm. and spend the money that's necessary to educate our children. No, Mike, don't say that. That's not true. Um, for instance, Holliston, Hopkinton, how many of those towns, Franklin, have had overrides over the last year? Almost every single one of oh. them, every single year. Because they value the importance of education. No, they're, no. They're, they're, they're proving they the override because they want they, to invest in education. They can afford it. No, because they're We can't afford it. I would disagree. I don't think they're having proposition to enough overrides because they can afford it. I think they're having proposition to enough overrides because they can't afford it. <laughs> Either way. That's the reason why we, they're being proposed, because we, the town we, can't afford it. That's we, the reason why, because the town can't afford it. Now, that being said, I, and I'm not, number one, I, and I want to be very, very clear. I, am, I don't think we are now, nor do I ever, Never. what could I ever possibly support, even considering going down that road and even using, I, to be honest with you, I, I won't even use the words override. That's, it's, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. That being said, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, if the ask is that you want us to go through the exercise so that we can go through and understand what the impact is of a gap of three point, close to just short of three, $3.8 million, we can do that. It's a, I, I'm prefacing that with, I, it's, there's a lot of bodies that come along, come along that road, a lot. Well, I, I think that the exercise needs to be done, my opinion, our opinion. Is what, I'm sorry? I think the exercise, the exercise needs Not to be done. Not saying that it actually gets cut, right. but going through the exercise. Jen? I think it's important. I, I think it will show a lot of different things. Okay, Jen? Well, you asked the question mark, what has changed? And in my opinion, working in a school, everything has changed. Everything in schools are different right now. And when we look at our, as Scott mentioned, our student population, the types of curriculum, the way we assess students, the needs of children and the way that we educate children right now is much more individualized. It's much more um, catered to the needs that our students bring with them. And our students aren't walking into our classrooms, sitting in rows in classes of 30, looking at their teacher and saying, yes, ma'am. It's not like that anymore. The social emotional messes that walk into schools in every single district, no matter what your socioeconomic climate is in your town, those things are taking everyone's time. Even this exercise right now, and, and we've looked at this page with all kinds of add-ons that the schools have asked for, they need that time. They need those people. They, the high school principal wants a data coach. You know why she wants that? Because she wants to look through the numbers. We've been asked to look at our students and to say, why are kids leaving Milford? The minute we start and the headlines in the Milford Daily News are going to say, proposal is to cut 24 teachers, 36 teachers, whatever it may be. That's not the kind of headline that's going to keep our kids in Milford. We want our kids to be competitive and the more things we start <coughs> sucking away, the larger our class sizes, the more curriculum things that we take away, the more damage we're gonna do to the kids coming out of the Milford Public Schools at exactly the time where I think with your help, with everyone here's help every single day, we're building, our, we're building this district up and we're making it the kind of district that our taxpayers deserve, our home values deserve, and more importantly, our students deserve. And if we come back here, and so from, from the perspective of someone working in a school, right now these teachers are getting ready for MCAS. And I'm sorry the budget and MCAS and all these things conflict at the same time. But the minute this exercise gets done and we start listing this position, this position, this position, the only thing that's gonna be going on in the Milford Public Schools is everybody sitting and scrambling about their job, worrying about next year and getting their resumes out there. And I'm not sure to what end. Um, I, I don't understand the purpose of that exercise other than to show this, a, a, a picture of doom and gloom. Um, I, and I will tell you, Mark, when, when you said it and Al said it, and I, these guys will back me, I said we should cut this budget. We need to cut it down to right. below 4%. And they went back and they looked at, at the figures and they came back. And, and the best worst case scenario is getting close to the number you asked is four positions being cut. That's a lot of positions, even four in a district of this size. If it's my kid in that class, if it's your kid in that class, that's 26, so, 27 kids. It's well, devastating. So, uh, uh, John's next. John's next. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. You can. 
No, no, I, I, and I totally understand what you're saying, and I don't want to paint the picture of doom and gloom. I, I, we never want to paint that picture, but I, I think you need, we need to look at all of these numbers that have been carried forward over the years, because th those numbers get compounded significantly, yeah. right? which has increased the school budget significantly. Maybe there was a mistake that we made way back in the day saying we shouldn't have carried those numbers forward. Right. That was our mistake. We were being um, trying to do the right thing. But well, <coughs> I think we're at a point now where those numbers are out of control. And, and I think that's the issue. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, a couple of things. You know, on, on the non reoccurring items, I think it would have been helpful. And, and I guess maybe they were pointed out last meeting, <coughs> Kathy. But that's something that we have drilled down. So I've been on the FinCon for 20 years. We drill down every budget what's non-reoccurring, pull it out. Because we know that just increases the budget. So just in terms of dialogue and communication, I think that would have been really helpful. Um, the other thing, I mean, you know, as a finance committee, we really want to provide quality education for our kids. And, you know, and, and we're not, and believe me, we're trying to do that. Um, where we struggle is how do we measure it? Mm -hmm. How do you measure it? That's the thing, how do you measure it? How, how are our kids getting value? So, you know, one of the things, in, in terms of an exercise, um, and we still have to talk about the budget, but I think data is very helpful. Mm -hmm. So things like, you know, administrators per students and, and class size and scores and choice. And, you know, at, at one point years ago, I was chairman of the subcommittee, and we drilled down and got tons of data. And data was helpful. It's not the answer, but at least it facilitates communication. And at least it gives us, as non-educators, some understanding as to what's going on. Things like uh, you know, state aid per student uh, or uh, per capita spending per student. I think there's a lot of data that I think if you work at and help provide, that would help us. It doesn't solve the problem, but I think the communication is certainly a better start. So. John? Yeah, I just want to go back to Mark's statement. Mark, can you say, we can't afford this. Um, I don't think that the math supports that. I think. If we went forward with this, this budget of, um, I don't know what the number was, but the three point, uh, whether it's three point nine or four point nine, um, or four point five two, we we can afford that. We're well under the levy limit, um, but we as a committee have to go forward and say, is this what we want to ask the taxpayers for? But to say we can't afford it, I think that's misleading. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. Not a get good choice of words, John, but. But you're but right. Maybe, maybe a little misleading. Sense, but yeah, we can't afford. It. We shouldn't. We shouldn't spend it. And maybe that's what we're saying. Maybe we're saying the same things. But it's it's you know us as a committee have to have to look really hard at these numbers and see what we want to bring forward. Um, hopefully with your approval. But I, I don't like diving too much into the past because these are all decisions I wasn't a part of. But I'm looking at the numbers. You know what we can and can't sustain as a community, and that's that's an, that's another part of it. You know, too much of an increase is not sustainable. We recognize that. Because obviously it's compounded again next year. Yep. And so we're right back where we started for before. And we had the discussion the last meeting with um, the number of teachers that we've kept on over the eight, eight years since we got stimulus money and, and how we, we, we helped manage that going forward at that time. That was before your time and, and a bunch of people here. Um, we also talked about choice. At that time, eight or nine years ago, the choice numbers were pretty even. They were about 500K in and out. We're at 500 in and a million three out, a million four out, it went up, okay? This is not, you, you talk about doom and gloom. This doesn't present a good picture of our, our district either, mm -hmm. where more kids are going out of district. We talked about last year, well, Woodland will fix that. I'd like to see the data that says Woodland changed those numbers, the new Woodland School. It hasn't even been open a year yet, Mark. I know. <coughs> I know that. But everybody knew it was coming. So how many kids in second grade choiced out before they got to the new Woodland versus the year before? The other, the other thing I, I, I want to talk about in choice, and we'll get back to the budget in a minute, but I, I, while well, I have it in my brain, um, BBT? Uh, BBT. We, we lost 12 students at BBT. 
They took 12 less students this year than they took the year before. We had 23 gain last year, we're down 12. And the, the um, superintendent said that the number of applications were down. And I said, I don't understand that. You know, we all advocate for Blackstone Valley. It doesn't go against our choice numbers because they're, they're outside of the choice category. And we would love our kids to go to BBT. I mean, it costs us $9,500 a student to educate them at BBT. Um, and, and they get a good education. Yes, they take some of our students, that the academic students, but we, we advocated to, to Dr. Fitzpatrick to take a lot more of the non-academic students, the students that need the shop classes and the, the, the electrical and the auto mechanics, et cetera, et cetera, to go on and, and be good citizens and earn a good living and, and stuff. And he said, the numbers are down. And so I, you know, my suggestion, and, and I hate to get off topic, and I really didn't mean to do it, um, but we're talking about students and choice. Um, I, I think next year when your team presents the eighth grade, I think maybe you should talk with BBT and present together. Um, because I think there's a, there's a good school to go to. Yes, it takes some of our students from here, but I think that we're trying to get them to lower their standard for some of the other students to go over there so we don't have to deal with the students here and not be able to help them. Just as an aside, and I really didn't. Um, but let's get back to this. If you could talk to me about these numbers that you gave us last okay. time, <clears throat> and, and the number of, first of all, I don't know what contracted service is. That's a, a category. <clears throat> Well, essentially what you have, Mark, that's the uh, Department of Ed's fund code structure. Mm -hmm. So there's <coughs> contract service for each fund code. So you could have a um, school committee with a contract service need. You could have a superintendent office with a contract what? need. That's just built by the fund code um, but what, structure. What, what kind of service is it? Well, give me, what are you, which I don't know. department Take the are you committee. looking at? Take the school committee. It's the first one on the list. Yep. You have $5,000 for contracted services, $2,500 for materials and supplies, $5,700 for secretary, and $57,000 for other. That must be your Caribbean trips. <laughs> no, that's postage. Um, school committee contract service might be something that Melissa would need to develop for school committee, whether it be a professional development uh, workshop would be a Jerry? contract service. Um, Where's Jerry? Jerry's under legal. Okay. It's at the MESC. MSC, MASC would be a perfect example of a contract service. What's MASC? Oh, um, the it's Massachusetts, Massachusetts Association, Association of School Committees. Of school committees. They, they provide might, training. Right. That, that's an example of a contract service for a school committee. Okay. So there's significant numbers in there. Uh, maybe. You may want to look at some of those numbers and see if you can't pull some of that out. As an example, give, give, give us an example. Well, our, uh, as an example, administrative technology, contract services, 33,000. Um, That's literally uh, managing our network. Professional networks, development, 61,000. That would Media, be. Media, 7,400. Don't want to Tech offer the teachers professional development. 185,000. Say that one more time. I didn't hear that. What? I, I didn't yeah, hear that last one. one. Psychologist, 185,000. That's literally all your psyche valves and your contract service for special ed. And, and, and it's very difficult to make that number no, balance at the end of the year. We have to watch that line very closely. It's a, it, Mark, that goes back to Jen's comment right. earlier about the social and emotional needs. Uh, I'm interested. I mean, obviously, we don't know what these mean. So to, for us to understand, I think it's maintenance contract services, I have to assume that's all the, the HVAC stuff and, the, and the, all of that. General maintenance. Yeah, general maintenance yeah. contracts. Keeps the buildings alive. Um, but that's eight hundred sixty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Then I then I look at this and and I talked earlier about the number of hires, okay, that you have here that are outside of the, the teachers. Mm -hmm. And so I, I question, or we should question some of those as well. No, and I, I think we um, alluded to that at our last meeting. 
that we want to deliver service better to our students. And part of that is looking at our TAs and BAs and how they're de delivering service, consolidating that into um, teaching, so to speak, and that reduces at the same time our health insurance costs. So it's a win-win for the students and the town. Well, take human resources. Okay. I don't know what that means, but you went from $50,000 budget last year to a proposed $128,000 budget. So you hired one or two more people. Well, no, but it's, uh, we have three unions that we're negotiating. Okay. So it, it says salaries. Yep. So I have to assume it's headcount. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it's, Kath, do you have the details on that? Well, it's Pr a principal's office. It, well, Mark, Mark, this might give you some context, and this might answer your question too, Phil. You're saying you wanted some data in different areas. Um, the latest data I have is from 2015. But, and again, this is broken up by the DESE again, but this is just to give the, the uh, FinCom a sense of kind of where we are compared to the state because that's really the only, the only metric we can really compare to. Um, administration per pupil cost, and Milford is $359 per pupil. For the state, it's $531 per pupil. Instructional leadership is $732 per pupil in Milford, $976 at the state level. Classroom and specialist teachers, $5,565 per student in Milford, $5,619 in the state. For professional development, which is a number you just, you just referenced, it's $111 per pupil in Milford, $197 in the state, so a little less than double. Instructional materials, equipment, and technology, $229 in Milford, $431 in the state. So, so Kevin, what, I, can, I can keep going through. But what it what just, are you trying to say that that because we're under underfunded theoretically to no, the no, state? No, no. I'm, I'm just trying to see what Phil know. just asked for. Yeah, yeah. 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 Phil oh, just asked I mean, for that information, so we got it. <laughs> but I'm trying to oh, give we, some. I'm trying to give some. We gave us those numbers the last time. We had some of those numbers. But yeah, I want to give some context to the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, they're on the they're on the on the education website. But but when you when you talk about having too much staff. That clearly demonstrates that we don't have. No, I, I just asked. Staff. But well, my comment was going to be, if you think we're understaffed or underfunded based on the state average, just add people. I mean, no, it doesn't make any sense. No, it's not what we're. That's not what we're. Well, adding, adding, adding it's people the basis else, of but it's yeah. Right. That's what I'm trying. I'm right. just trying to give you. And, and, and I understand that. My, my question we're is, we're talking about the average. We're not asking to get in the top quartile. <laughs> we're just asking to get to median, right? I, I get so, that. I, I get that, but I, I just want to understand why we're adding so many non-teaching professionals that we didn't have last year. That's all. It was just a question, and a significant amount of dollars. It's like three hundred, four hundred thousand okay. dollars. What are you referring to specifically? Yeah, can you yeah, can you give us detail? What no? no but what, I have what that. Specific, I'm just trying to understand what, what, you're, what you're speaking to specifically. Oh, well, it's all the ones that that have. Oh, you've added them all across no, the board? No, no, no. I just, I just highlighted the ones that had salary increases, significant salary increases, other than what looked like contractual. Okay. Well, part of that is that, uh, and I can answer that for you, the Title I grant has been eliminated from um, funding uh, a teacher and a para. That came with a cost of 150000 uh, in addition to that, the kindergarten grant has been in, uh, moved into our local budget. That's another 150000 That supports 15 TAs. Um, and, and we talked about that as well. And, and, and I believe uh, that's, for the most part, to two major impacts that we had to our budget. Right. And, and we talked about that last year when the, when the kindergarten grant went away, um, that grants should never be put in the operational budget because they go away. So if you're going to continue to, to utilize those resources, then obviously it has to go into your operational budget. Mm -hmm. um, we understand that. I'll, I'll talk to you about this offline. Okay. Jeff? So we... we oh, Jeff had a question. I'm sorry, go ahead. Jeff. Uh, just going back to some of the... What's the what, what percentage is the union salary impact? 
what, what they, it's per year, right? What are they two, three percent? What they, for, for, for eighteen, what's the eight percent? It's, it's it's more complicated than that. It, it is a little order. because teachers, for the most part, have a step and a cost of living. So the cost of living for the last three year contract was two, two, and two and a half. And on top of that, when they move a step, that can raise their salary between six and eight percent. But but overall, till they hit the, I, till I they hit step ten. Overall salaries. Teacher specifically? Well, I'm looking at the union Just salary impact of 1.6 million. Based, on what did that number come from? Did that get multiplied? It didn't get multiplied by the 44 million, which was the, which was the appropriation fund. The, I, can yeah, tell you, that, I can tell you the breakout by each association. So the teachers were 1.5 of that. The AFSCME union was 64,000, and non union was 33,000 to a total 1.59. Did that include steps as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How about lane changes? It does. Yeah, okay. So the one point five, but based on, um, can you tell me the starting point of what the, that salary was for the union so salary that included? So before the oh step, sure. up, what the percentage increase was, right? That That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. It's almost three percent. It's a contract. No, I know it's a contract. It's a contract. Three percent. Right. Because if I do three percent on the forty-four million, that's almost at that one point six. Right. We had to do some work to get down. That's why we were at the. 4.9, 4.5%. 4 it comes with a cost. We had to make re make reductions. We moved part of those expenses over to um, our revolving opportunity. So this 1.6, I'm looking at on this worksheet, you're saying that's lower now? Well, we've had two retirements at $50,000 savings. Yeah, my question was though, 44 million times 3% is roughly 1.6. 44 million is a total cost. Correct. I know, I understand that, but, but that's right. But so if I'm you take but that's my yeah. point. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly that's exactly yeah. my point. I think what I think what, I want to make sure I understand the question. What your question is is what percentage in teacher salary increase was there? Not over our, our overall budget. So just I'm going to make up a number. No. What teacher salaries. Hang on. Teacher salaries are ten million dollars. It went up by one point six million. So that's sixteen percent. Was it a 16%? So it's just what percentage of salary increases? Is that the question? What percentage? So we have $1.6 million in, in contract in teachers' salaries. Scotty. How much, what percentage did increase? That's his question. No, his question is the what are the union negotiated increases in the contract? Oh God, I just asked Jeff what his question was. He told me yes when yeah, I just said that. Yeah, he went, yes. No, you're giving his dollars. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, he sir, wants percentages. Right. I want to know. Jeff wants percentages. It's not a 16 percent increase. In this no, I made it up. I understand. But this, is, this, is, number. this is 1.6 million, which is of the overall budget. budget. Of the overall budget. You're asking what percentage of salary increases it was. This says union salary impact. Right. Mm -hmm. this is yeah, I think, I think I know what you're asking. There's, there's two separate things going on. We've got the predictable costs. Um, and we, and we, it's all predictable, but everybody on the top step is basically on that 2.2, 2, 2.5. Right. Um, based on the contract. Cost of living. Uh, whatever, whatever yeah, exactly. Call it. Yeah. Everybody no below. No steps. They're, yeah, already, they're already at the yeah. top step. Correct. Everybody below that, the increases vary depending on what step and lane they're on based on the year. And so that's where the number will jump above 2% or 2.5%. And that's that what drives that number. Right, so what's that, I guess what I'm trying to say is, what's that base number? You know, we know what that base number is. You know who's going to go to the step. Yep. And you know who's going to go to the steps. And you know, you know who's at the top level times the 2%, so you can Correct. do that math. Correct. You know who's going to go to the step. Correct. So you can do that and math. And that's where that's that 3.6. That's 1.6? That's the 1.6 million. That's the all the number. Hmm. So, so the 3.6. So like, it just seems like a big number to me. It is a big number. I agree. Big number. But it's 3.6% in terms of the increase year over year. We have a we have a reason we have a much younger teacher population than we've had in years past. But if you look, if thinking back to our retirement numbers, we've been retiring, Kathy. How many each year on average? Fourteen to eighteen. Well, um, for the last my first two years was sixty last, people. But just the last five years, how many on average? Teachers. On average, how many of the last five years each year? Double digits, anyways. Yeah, it's been double digits. But I can tell you that the association, which has 400 members, it's about 50-50 right now. 50% step 10 and 50% under that. When I got on, so this is year, I'm going into year six. Uh, the year before I got on, the expectation we were just going to have to replace almost 80% of our teacher population. We've done almost all of that. But so our, our teacher population age went from an average age of late 50s 
to an average age of mid thirties. Understood. So which you, is why those, but as a result, because of the younger teacher population, those steps and lanes numbers get pretty big. Pretty fast. In, in the, for the in, for the impact, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but that means your top your salary should have been at the top step for the eighty teachers that left. You were already funded for the top step. Mm -hmm. So now you brought these teachers in at the bottom step. Yep. That gap should have covered the could should have covered the step. Yep. But yeah, you're still looking for the money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we right. see the increase in the right because we've increased the where the increase in the staff and the headcount comes in. Yeah, and headcount went up. Don't forget the right. the headcount went up. I and just wanted to ask uh, one one point of clarification. When you said the the union impact was three point six percent, are you saying three point six percent of the increase was you, or or is it so the, the total year over year oh, that line? Yeah, so the total dollar amount, just so everybody's clear on this, the total dollar amount is one point six million dollars roughly. It's what one point five nine something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but we rounded up to one point six just for the for the budget right. sheet. For the increase. But I'm asking how much a percentage it's three point six year. three point six percent year over year. Just that line. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right, can we, can we move on? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, technology, one fifty five number. Yes. You, you, the 155 number had three budgeted three positions, and you're asking for a fourth. My, my question is that, and, and everybody on, on the um, finance committee asked the same question you have three positions. You chose to put the salary person in this group, which took up one of your positions. So, I, I would have a hard time advocating for another position. The salary person should be in your operational budget, our opinion. So then you still have three positions. Where were we I asking for another position? Yeah, I, I was going to say. On that. No, we didn't. Where you see that? Yeah, we did. Yeah, that was our original proposal. Yeah, actually, original. We, 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 you we changed took that, that off the table, took it, yes. Oh, it's off the table? Yes, after the finance out, committee came back to us and said that the 155 was funded. I'm for sorry. A I, thought, I thought this was a new. That's the original. That's still the original. Oh, it's the original. Yeah. Okay. Right. Take so it all back. We left Thank it at you. the two techs and the director. All right. I'm sorry. Just, just, just to clarify, we, we, <laughs> we never talked about three positions. You gave us an, an allotment of money, and then we determined we wanted to no, no, those funds. No, no. Originally, it was right? three. It was three positions. It was three technicians. And we never had a conversation about the number of positions. We said this. Talk with we're the guy. Put this group. amount of money was, in no, the budget. I, I'm, I agree with Joe. We didn't. We didn't discuss having three positions. We had talked about, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. We had talked about, I, with Joe, I do agree on this. We said you give the next one at all. I don't care if you buy Twizzlers with them, M&M's, it doesn't matter. Right. And I both, we also said that this is what you get. Right. And what you decided to do is hire a director of curriculum, technology, education, whatever the title is, which did eat up a large portion of it. So you could have hired eight techs at 20000 or could have hired three. We really didn't care, but we had told you the number to number. So we did, in our mind, base it on, base it on three texts. It's exactly okay, right. I, I so Mark is right in our thought process. But as we do with what your budget is, you're going to do whatever you want with the budget. And that was part of the deal that we made about 155, about not spinning it off, was that we would tell you that you could do whatever you want with your portion of the budget. And that's why you guys did what you did, and, and I don't have an issue with that. Okay, never mind. Okay. Next. I'm done with budgets. So can we get back well, to the original budget, yeah. though? Because we, we, we don't have any resolution there yet, yeah. right? So um, Kathy shared the, the data with you. Um, yeah, if you turn to the, the page that brings us down to the 3.97, um, that's still 45.8 million, right? So if you're on yep. the yeah. one to fourth page where it shows what our budget would look like if we reduce it to three to a three point nine seven percent increase, yep. that's forty that's forty five point eight million dollars. Correct. Can I just interrupt on that? So that's a reduction of four positions. Are these positions from this budget worksheet that has additional positions on those are already gone? So yes. They're already, yes. Right. already eliminated. Yes. These right. are four in addition to this. Each, this each, page. each page is so you were all okay. Okay. Each page is an additional level of cuts. Okay, thank you. Yep. So, so this was. So, if you get to the bottom line here, right? To come in under four, three point nine seven percent. That brings us down to forty five point eight million dollars. What I heard earlier is that you want us to be around forty three. Forty three. Forty three million. million. No, um, I didn't say that. But I believe what I said when Scott asked. <laughs> I said this forty three 
247 is the number that eliminated all the one-time issues from the year before. Yep. So that 42399 is a level service budget plus 2% increase, which is a FinCom and Finance Director director recommendation. That gets you to 43247. Yep. Right. So, so and, and then we said, or I said, or I thought we agreed, that you'd go back and look at 43247 with all of this and see how close you can get to that 43247 number. If you're telling me you can only get to 45840 without, I don't buy that. Go back and look it again. So, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is that to get down to that 45.8 million, as you can see here, that's four teaching positions. I, I know right. that's right. so before what Mark says. That's, What's that? It's before, if you understand how you got to that. I'm, I'm working down. You guys are working up, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I've worked my way so down to 45. Premises, of two different premises. He's saying you have to take the non-recurring things out of last year's budget to start at. So if you take his position, getting to your number becomes a little different of a math uh, exercise. Right. The day the number's still the number. No, but it's how you no, build it. No, it's not. The number's not the number, Joe. You started from if you, forty-four if you, if you, million. If you need a hundred, if, if I need a hundred dollars, I need a hundred dollars. But this regardless of where I start. It's, a, it's about where you spent the hundred dollars last year, <laughs> because you don't have to spend it there anymore, and you have a different place to spend. I, I, I think we understand. I think you should look at the numbers and then come back, and we'll talk about how we get to where we need to get to. Well, n not that I want to delve into these numbers here, Mark, but um, you know, just quickly, five, almost 500000 that you have on this sheet for Middle School East, you have to remember all of those funds shifted to Woodland. No, which no, is, no, 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 no. You have Woodland School to, that woodland, shifted to Woodland. The Woodland building needs to be maintained, and we the square footage has increased over middle school east yep, and there right. are new systems that need to be supported yes, totally that the funding for maintenance had to go to support the new hvac system yeah. the new all of that has to be supported i agree with Those you funds are moving 100 percent. i agree with you 100 percent, kath except that in last year's budget we added ninety seven thousand dollars to your budget to for Woodland. No, you. Uh, the question. No, 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 no. The right question here. was ninety-three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. Woodland new maintenance. You wanted to know how much of our budget that Middle School East was built into our local operating. That's what that was. That's not in addition to. No, no. I'm sorry. This says Woodland new maintenance, security system, filters, water treatment, refrigerant, coolant, heat, water, phone, electricity. Total of ninety three thousand above and beyond above and beyond what we're paying for East. And we, you have what's here whoa, whoa, listed. We we added the ninety three thousand to your budget. The hundred and seven was added as well. We're just taking the hundred and seven back out because that was for middle school east. And you also have three hundred here. Because that's what the normal budget number is in your in your total budget. But but Mark, middle the woodland building needs to be maintained. Where did you we simply have wait, what we wait. received what from the spend? Woodland Building Committee wait, what did as you, an actual number. What's in your budget for the old Woodland School? You, I don't know that number off the top. Well, that I number know. goes to the new Woodland School, and the 93000 additional number on top of it. should cover you for Woodland so, School. So yours, your proposal, sorry, Joe, needs to have these off with a 93000 or 97000 in addition to no we added that to last year's budget it's in there <coughs> yeah. we didn't take that out it's in your 17 budget and, and just look at electric reduction the woodland building is a very large building we can't just flatly take out um, a, a number from the electric account because right now we're running in the red because the woodland building is that much larger for us to run with electricity and utilities so equal to east. Correct. Your budget for wood, the we new didn't woodland inflate schools, it. The budget for new woodland schools is one hundred thousand for electricity. You're running at one hundred and thirteen right now, year to date. So you're thirteen thousand over. But what we're saying for eighteen is is a ten percent reduction in cost. So that that's ten thousand dollars off. So you'd be about equal. All mm. right. Um, and. And I had this discussion with the finance director because if you go back to FY14, your total electricity was $560,000.
with all of the increases in electricity costs for 15 and 16, we increased your budget by 65% for utilities. So I wanted to take the 65% back out, but he said, you can't do that. You can only take 10% of the new costs. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll buy into that. So you got a 65% increase. And as long as we're talking about electricity, school district is the highest usage of electricity in the town. No kidding. You're, five, you're 500,000 really? on a 1.1 million dollar budget. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, I have a proposal. The town has a proposal. The town would like you to look into solar power. Yep. Um, and I'd like to see, uh, this committee would like to see a report back in about a month on what your positions are in solar power. We know Woodland's already set up for it. So we can certainly do Woodland. Um, uh, Memorial, Brookside, <coughs> Uh, Stacy and the high school are significant. You can reduce these costs to the town significantly. And we're on a net metering anyway. This is in addition to net metering. So our committee, finance committee and, and this subcommittee would love you guys to look into that and come back to us with a proposal on how you can implement solar energy on your in the district to save the town money and to save you guys money. John? Well, uh, I want to take it back up. We got kind of derailed here. Back to Middle School East, and I, I don't want to get, I, maybe we're beyond that now, but. We'll, we'll get to Middle School East. <coughs> I thought we were just at Middle School East. Mm -hmm. we were, yeah. Well, we Before really that. weren't, but Before go ahead. That. With the budget. Oh yeah, with the budget, I'm sorry. Yeah. We, what I remember we did, we, had, we took the old Woodland budget, the East budget, and we had to add even to that because the new, this is what I'm remembering, because the new Woodland cost more to run than those two combined. And what we did, we only carried enough money to cover the cover east until through the summer. And we said, if we're going to keep it open past that, we're going we're to have to fund it, which we did. Yeah, you had it in your budget. You had 300000 no, we didn't have that in your budget. budget. No, we didn't. Well, that was the number that we used on the, I on think the that reuse might be committee. As the, and that's what the finance director came back with as the typical or the cost to run middle school lease on an annual basis. That's Right, and then we applied that to the new woodland. No, but what about the old woodland? What did you do with that money? That too. That those costs. I right, can't believe that. You're right. You're right, John. Those the two cost schools, of the new building. I can't believe it. Well, you it's have to true. show me data. No, you have to show me data. I, why I, is that though? Why, why does I a can't brand believe new that. school cost more to maintain? It's, and it's efficient. Than two school. old schools. So a lot more stuff down. The size of it and what's inside of it for electronics. Have you been in it? I haven't been in it. The old Woodland School sure. on an electricity you should, you should basis was seventy-one thousand dollars. It's loaded. With, it's loaded. With How many square feet? Mike, there's a lot. Six hundred eighty-one thousand square feet. No. No, it's one hundred thirty-three. No, no, it's not. It's one hundred twenty-six thousand square feet. No, yeah. but I mean, you have a million square feet. feet, feet, feet you if you get in, Mike, and see it, you can understand. School is, the high school is what four hundred yeah. something. Yeah. Four hundred. Last year's last year's electricity at the old Woodland School was seventy-two seventy-two thousand dollars. Middle school lease was thirty-two thousand. The new Woodland School budget is a hundred thousand. So Stacy almost runs as much as, <laughs> no. in fact, runs more than Woodland. I was going to say, Stacy's budgeted higher. I think we need to have at least one year mark of the building being open. I don't have a problem with that. To evaluate that's that. Yeah, that's fine. Fairly. Yeah, totally, totally agree. But when we had this discussion three years ago, when we started building Woodland, we all said. You have a budget for Woodland, and you have a budget for Middle School East, and they're not going to get combined when, when Middle School East goes out of out of out of sight. Okay, we said you have to come up with a budget for the new Woodland School, which is the ninety-three thousand dollars additional money that we threw into your budget. But the but the Middle School East numbers have to come out. You don't have Middle School East anymore. You're turning over to the town next in July. And speaking of which, when we sell property. Uh, in the real estate business and when we give it over to a new owner it's broom clean and we would like to see middle school leave broom clean when we take it over in july one so mike no problem no problem the only, just kidding the only thing i i understand the <coughs> exercise i see where we are when i look at what's being taken out i want to make sure <coughs> As I've said with other things, and you and I have talked about this before, I have no problem paying for things. I don't like, I don't like paying for them twice. I want to make sure we're on the same we're on the same page here. The middle school east maintenance budget 
that you're proposing here for 300,000. And you're right, that was the number that we were going forward with the middle school and, reuse and committee. And yep, I know we, we had numbers. I know, every month for two years. Right. Got it. The $300,000 that was put in there, that was the 16 number. What we asked for with the 17 was not an additional 107, 103 on top of that 300. Yes, it was. Absolutely was. Right here. Absolutely was. Two months. Right. Of the 300, which gave us the 107, 103. Yeah, 107, 130. That were two additional months. Right, beyond J July, June 1st. Correct. Ju July 31st. All, July and August is what you want. Right. It's two different budgets, though. So, yeah, it's two different fiscal years. It went from, so as of June 30th, yeah, that was the end of the 300. Yeah, we're taking it out of 17th numbers. No, I. Yeah, yeah. This is 18. We're talking about No, no, no I got 18. that. I got that. But what I'm saying is, is the 300,000 was that we said, okay, great. The 300,000 comes to an end as of June, as of June 30th. What we asked for was, hey, we understand the 300's gone as of June 30th of the 16 budget. But it was never So for gone, the 17 Scott. budget, the 107 is what we're looking to keep that It was that never gone, line. Scott. It was always in your budget. Okay. That's, that's what I wanted to clarify. Okay. Sure. So we keep going off on all these different tangents. At the end of the day, what, what, what's your bottom line? What number do we need to come in at? 43, 247, 300. That's as close to that as that's, you that's what, But that's what I said earlier, and he told me no. No, I said that's <laughs> no, I asked the same thing. You said yes. So, <laughs> so, so, it, so, so point, let's, let's go back to this. So is, is that the number you want to see us at? Y yes. Okay, so if that's the number you want to see us at, let's go back to that page that, that I asked you to go to before that showed the 45 yep. million, right? Yep. And to get to that 45 million, we have to cut the four teachers. So to get down to that 43 million, you're looking at 40 something teachers. But, but Mrs. Chiavi, Asked the right question. You started at 44 million to reduce. Started at. I lost my page now. Start backing out your numbers at 42 three, 399. But that's not where we are. But that's where you are. That's that's just level service budget. But to but to get to that, we're going to have to cut a substantial amount of teachers. And given Two. Milford's financial condition, given the state of the economy. I can't justify cutting teachers like that right now. I, I would do the math from there and come back to us. Now, and now I want you to do some math. I want you to come back and show me what no, the impact is on the town budget. side. I no. want you, I'm asking you to look at these numbers right here. We just showed you three different numbers. We showed yeah. you 47, 46, 45. Mm -hmm. I want to see from the town's perspective how that impacts the town budget. I want to see how that impacts the taxpayer. I want to see how that impacts the levy. I want to see how that impacts the town side. Why? What does it matter? Because I want to know what we can truly afford. I don't want to know what you think we can afford. I want to know what the town thinks, we, what the town can actually afford. Okay. And, no and another thing, too, Mark, I think which is important only because I've been around here the longest. I'm sorry. I, I said another thing that's very important. You're going to make us go through an exercise like this. And if you remember my first year on, then we showed up at the finance committee and we said 18 teachers were going to lose their jobs. And the finance committee said, Oh no, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. And at the end of the day, not one teacher lost their job. And why so is that, please, <coughs> why, why is that? Because we work together on it. But what I'm saying is don't put us through an exercise that at the end of the day, because as Joe said, it's a very large number, okay, and then we're going to come back to you with what we think is the best that we can do, and let's just say it's 25 positions. And then all of a sudden, the Finance Committee takes the position, well, the town can't do that because of the unemployment or the insurance or whatever the reason was, don't put us through that. Okay? Okay. Let's go back to eight years or nine years. It's me, eight about, years. And talk about those 18 positions. Yeah. I alluded to it earlier. We talked about it last time. If you recall, we got stimulus money. Though. Correct. And when you guys said that you were going to eliminate 18 positions, and they weren't all teachers, but I think there were some of them were custodians. We said, okay, we have all of this stimulus money. We'll let you use the stimulus money this one time for operational costs, which we never do, which is because it's, it's like choice money, because it never comes back. You get it one time. And we said, you need to, over the course of the next four years, absorb that back into your budget. If you remember right, we wanted to hold 650000 of it for the following year. And you did. No, we didn't. No, the federal government came did. back and said, no, we couldn't do it. We had to spend it all. That's no, why we bought no, the buses. No, you absolutely did. I'm sorry, but you did. Right? 
you, you actually there's more than 650,000 you save for the following year. But that's what we said to you back then. Absorb the number, the, the 14 or 16 positions in your operational cost over the next four years because you're not getting any, there's no more stimulus money. We have to be able to afford to absorb those teachers, those positions. And, and the agreement was you would do that. You, the school committee, would do that. Well, here we are, and you haven't done it. So we're back to the same 14 to 16 positions. It's more than that. Well, now it's more because it's compounded. You hired more people. I, 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 don't, know how to, I don't know how to work the numbers any other way. Right? We don't have stimulus money. We're, we're short on choice money significantly by six hundred, seven hundred, eight, eight hundred thousand dollars. What we're saying to you, Mark, and is if you listen to what Jen had to say, she makes a valid point. Our student keeps changing, so it costs more to educate, and the demands from the state are more, and we and have I to put that. more people in the class. You don't get that because you keep no. asking me. You, 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 your head count keeps growing. Of course, it keeps growing because the, the student is changing, the state's changing the rules. Okay, so we're trying to abide by the rules. Mike, and when we fund it, Okay, in year one, whatever year one is, then you add significant amount of more personnel in year two, and it's compounded from year one. It changes every year. Well, I mean, how do we manage that? Exactly. We, how does how the do town, we? How does the town afford to do that? Thank you very much. That, how does the school committee manage the mandates that are coming out of how, Boston but how every do we single? Pay for it, Michael. Exactly, uh, Mark. That's a great question, and we ask ourselves the same thing. And so we're trying to work to some number. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all we're trying to do. And every year we go through the same exercise to a certain number. Let's get to a number. Come back to us with a number. As close to that number as you can. Joe? Remember, there's 2% so in here you, already. You, you mentioned, um, you, guys, you guys talked about what happened years ago. Was that, was that 2008 or 2009? Do you, do you remember the year? 2009, my first year on. So, right. so 2009, the local contribution was $21,867,000. Last year, the local contribution was $21,840,000. So the local contribution last year was 27 million, le I'm sorry, 27,000 less than it was back in 2009 when we were supposedly in a financial crisis. And now we're in much better financial condition and you're not willing to make an additional investment? No, that, that's not the answer, Joe. Don't quote numbers at me. That's not fair. The numbers speak for themselves. It, it's, it's, what do you mean it's not fair? It, How's that not fair? All right. You want, you want to quote numbers? We can do that. We'll quote numbers. We'll talk about this the next time. You come back with your numbers. We'll come back with our numbers. Then we'll talk about the numbers that the DOE puts up on the system about the, the quality of education we're getting in this town. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that. And, and how, what, what your report card shows. And if you want to talk about it that way, we can talk about it that way. Well, so I'd, that's I'd, the same like question to. that we yeah, had, Jen. Like I don't mean to cut you off, Mark, but I, I got to say, I've, I've never seen a budget work this way. I've never sat in a meeting with school committee, superintendent, town manager, what have you, where people are asked to go through item by item and give back money before they build a budget. That I've never seen it done that way. Have any of you ever seen a budget built that way where a school gives money back each year well, before you start? Well, though, Jen. I mean, I guess the question is, and I apologize for cutting you off too, but if, if I think if you validate whether or not those non-recurring costs are real, then they you, sh you don't get to do the same thing again the next year. So why wouldn't your budget be set at a number that you take out re non-recurring costs? Because the, the things around us are real. And so the well, expenses that we're paying out are real. So, I mean, it's not like people are going, whoever said the Caribbean. No, th there's no money that's been spent on extras here. And, and when we talk about a school and we talk about Woodland, and we have a beautiful brand new school in this town, it isn't Woodland that's gonna keep kids here. We might have all talked about it, and yeah, the old Woodland was <coughs> scaring people away. The new Woodland may be going to bring kids here, but what's going to bring kids to this district is top-notch instruction, and you're right. We have work to do on instruction. And in my mind, that's the most important thing we can be doing in this district right now. Finding ways to have continuity in our curriculum. Building curriculum to make sure kids are getting a consistent experience. That's where curriculum leaders come in. That's where administration comes in. That's where making sure teachers have appropriate and research-based professional development. That's where all of that comes in. All those Chromebooks that we're talking about, teachers need to learn how to use them. We need staff to support them. So if we want to make this a top-notch district, and we want to keep up and we want our report card to improve, which all of us do, that's instruction. And we need money to keep teachers in these classrooms 
and by cutting dozens and dozens of teacher, we, we are going so far backwards. I said it before, but this, if by taking four teachers out, I don't know how we're gonna do it. And in my estimation, I, I just don't see how much further we can go. They've given us the numbers. This is what we have. We've cut and cut again. We have pages of things that principals want, administrators want, teachers want, that we absolutely know we can't afford and we're not asking for. But when we're looking at a budget, there's barely any new positions in here. You're right, we're not, there has been a head count. You're right, there have been positions added because we've needed them. I myself talked about the other night, maybe we should look at some regular ed aids. Maybe we should look at kindergarten needs. And then I hear the percentage of kids from Craig that are coming into kindergarten. They're five. They're babies. They 40% of them don't speak English. We can't do that to our non-English speaking kids. We can't do it to our English speaking kids. We can't do it to our teachers. Our teachers are burned. We have to keep them motivated and by, we have to support them. I can't, I just absolutely can't sit here and ask us to agree to go back to cut dozens of teachers. I appreciate the exercise, but I, I and I understand why you're asking it, but this is what's gonna come back. It's gonna come back with cut after cut after cut, something we, we, we can't do it. We can't do it to our town. I don't wanna do it to my home value. Yeah, just, Mike, um, Phil. Phil. just a comment. You know, what I think would be helpful, and I think Mark does have a point. I mean, if we had 1.7 million, which I think that's what it totals, in this year's budget that we don't have in next year's budget because it's non-reoccurring, I think we have to understand where that money is being appropriated. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big hole in all of this. Because obviously, it's been used somewhere. So yeah, when you do the math, the math's nuts. When you do the math, it's cheese. But that 1.7 is being used. And I think in terms of, of coming to a, an understanding of the budget, it would be helpful as to how that is being used. Yeah, I was going to ask that same question, because I think you said, Joe, that 1.7 was used to close the gaps. Gaps and spent on what? Well, the, yeah, I, I think, that, that, I think that's, that's your question, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, some yeah, communication as to where it went it would be helpful. At least some understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, you know, I, I think if we're able to go through, which I know we are, I know, I know Kathy has all the details for us, and go through and certainly be able to understand and, and be able to communicate how the funds are being, you know, where, where some of these things have been appropriated and how that's helping move forward. My concern is always goes the same place because unfortunately, because of the way that we're held accountable by the state, um, anytime there's a cut, it comes from one place, anytime. It comes from the average kids sitting in our classroom. It doesn't come from yellow, ever, can't, we're not allowed to. It doesn't come from special ed, ever, it can't. What it comes from is, it comes from your A students and your B students and your C students that are English speaking and sitting in the Milford Public Schools. They are the ones that will continue to balance this budget on their back, always. It has to, we don't have a choice. And I know you guys are in a similar position. I think we owe it to the taxpayers to make sure that we're communicating how we're spending. I, I think that's a fair, fair, fair ask to be able to communicate where that comes from. I, yeah, a little sticker shock when I see the gap between our bottom line budget, which requires the reduction of four teachers, to an additional almost 2.6 million, but for the difference of seven thousand dollars, about 2.6 million dollar gap. That's a lot. There's definitely it takes my breath away a little bit. For the 1.6 that's over here, yeah, I mean, what you're asking for is better communication around how we reallocated that money. That's yeah, fair. Way to go. That's, <laughs> and that's fair. I think that's a fair ask. The sticker shock for me is definitely, and like I said, but just prefacing it with, yeah. the backs of, where, where that gets balanced is from the average English speaking children in the town of Milford. Yeah. That's, that's where that money is coming from. It's coming from their benefit. So when we talk about how to move the district forward, to Jen's point, we're going to continue to invest in the places that we are mandated to. I can tell you right now, if we end up having to come back, because that is a big number, and Joe pointed it out, I can tell you right now, I, I don't know anything about anything when it comes to education. Test scores are going down. We've cut 50 teachers. They're going down. You add four more kids per class, test scores are going down. Graduation rates are going down. I can tell you right now, they are. I, and I don't know anything about, about anything. I've never taught a day in my life. However, I have a little insight on this. 
as I grew up with two people who have been teaching for 40 years. That's what, again, it's not coming from special ed. It's not coming from ELL. It's never going to. I want to be very clear. The ask is then going to be the average student is going to see their class sizes increase because ELL students can't see an increase in it. Neither can special ed students. They're capped by the state. We owe better communication on 1.6. I got it. I think that's fair. I just, as we have both kind of go walk away from this meeting, I want to make sure we're both on the same page. That that's, we understand what you're asking, and we're going to go through that exercise and make sure we understand and better communicate around that. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Of, that's whose backs this stuff gets balanced on. Okay. Any other member? I have a couple more items. Okay, so, no, that's so fine. You, we're all set with this. I'll get you those. If I remember what <coughs> um, Finance Committee asked that uh, our next meeting, I believe, we're going to talk about IT, and we'd like you to have somebody come to the meeting and discuss IT, your IT side versus the town side. What's the and date? It's an open discussion about what's going on. The date? Uh, second Wednesday of the month. Second Wednesday in April? <coughs> it's um, up, 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 12. Okay. 4 12, 7 o'clock? Yes. Well, second Wednesday, that's the regular finance committee. Yeah, correct. Oh, okay. That's what they asked at the last meeting. Okay. All right, last thing I, I want to go over if we can question. is. Yeah. Um, Mark, I, on the IT thing, when we, if we do bring people to that meeting, what would be the overall goal to bring our IT people to that meeting? I, I think the, the finance committee mm -hmm. wants to have an understanding of what's going, what you guys are up to, what has been accomplished here, and what funding you, you require, that 155 number. And what are the numbers in your budget? Because I didn't see any. I, I, we took it out. Um, technology requirements that you may have that we don't know about. So we just an update on funding and what's happening right. with technology. Correct. Is that? That's what you've asked for. Right? Yep. All right. The last thing I have is is um, capital. Capital. Okay. I know you you went to the uh, capital subcommittee. I have there's a bunch of articles on the warrant and most of which are non-issues for most of us. Um, and I just want to go quickly, the vending machine money you get. Uh, I understand that there's a, a commitment for peg access money um, from Comcast to build some more stuff in the TV area, I guess. This needs to have a number. There's no number. That is a, um, a housekeeping article that uh, Zach requested, and I think it came from the Department of Revenue, requi similar to the way we're handling the vending machine article. In order for the school to access the Comcast donation, we need to have a article vote. Is this an ongoing thing? I, once we have the vote, I believe it then just moves forward um, each year. The account has to be established. <coughs> for the school committee to expend the Comcast donation, and that's what we're doing. We no. hadn't done that, according to, I believe it's the DOR. This, this, this says, see if town will vote to authorize the expenditure of available balance and fund 2696 Comcast Verizon PEG access on the Jersey School Committee purpose for the purposed purpose of performing upgrades in accordance with PEG access agreement. Correct. And I, I, I believe the number will exist as of June 30th, but I could be wrong with that. Results, town voting, duck, establish peg access and cable related fund school committee. Okay, that's what happens. You're right. It's, it's a revolving account. I believe so. All right. Um, the last article I have on here, or two articles, it's special education stabilization fund. Can, can you guys explain that to me? I know there's a new law. That's the law. The Modernization Act. What are you going to put money in there for? Well, essentially that law allows school committee uh, local appropriation budget budgets not to close to the general fund. It allows for a rollover amount up to 2% of net school spending at the end of the year to be moved into that SPED reserve fund. So Mark, has any Through the Municipal Med um, Re Recovery Act. So like la last year where we had that reduction in SPED costs, in, in theory, what you could do now is put that money in that account 
to help level future increases. No, but you, it's under your jurisdiction, not ours. Right, but, but right. what I meant. Has to be. I didn't mean you specifically. I meant, <laughs> I meant not. So now, now we have an account. It acts almost, almost as account, a mini stabilization. <laughs> right. And it acts almost like a mini stabilization account, right? So mm -hmm. if you wanted to, you could fund that account year over year, and you could use that to offset the spikes in um, costs Tuition associated and with, yeah. with, with SPED. What's the yeah. percentage on that, Kathy? Two percent. For us, it would be about nine hundred thousand. That's just a roll. Would be like number. exactly. I would mean, you, if we had fifty thousand, you know, we'd could, be lucky. Can you fund it with additional funds, or is that the only way you can fund it? My understanding is that it rolls from your local appropriation into that fund after June thirtieth. So if you have a surplus, it would roll up. Right? Correct. Right now, it closes to the general fund. Sure. But it's for only special education and at a district tuition or transportation. Correct. The only thing you can use it for. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. The last is the is the um, Chromebooks. I don't. I don't. What did you discuss or agree to with Mr. Korea? Um, where the requirement here is that we get a report or a discussion of what you're going to use them for. Uh, how they're going to be maintained. I mean, it's a it's a capital appropriation number. It's six hundred thousand dollars, and in in industry, it's one page for ten thousand. So that's how we do things. Um, justification is necessary. Mr. Yeah, we'll have it this week. We have we have a report ready to go. Awesome. Okay. All right, we have a proposal as well um, for that. Is, is uh, did the district consider um, in instituting like a technology fee? For student to buy the Chromebooks, students take them with them. You have they have responsibility. You know, there'd be a lot more care of them. They'd, you know, be less carelessness. And you know, we could, we could obviously obviously support low income kids amongst the district here. But we need to do the technology fee, and then we have an in house staff that can maintain them. But this fee would go with the student. You know, and not not an annual fee. They buy it. They last what three, four, five. I don't know life of the life of the years that they're here. And then they graduate, they take it with them. It becomes their Chromebook, and we just keep on going. Remember what keep. happened up in Menden three years ago when they tried to do that? I don't, Mike. It was a colossal nightmare. Hey, I, I'm not sure that the finance department can figure out a way to do that because yeah. it's school it was, it's school mm -hmm. property. It really, it, oh, it was awful. It, it ended up I, having I to be talk with finance. It ended up having to be overturned, and yeah. they ended up having to go back and rebate them because right. yeah. Menden did it. They were like, oh, well, we'll just charge them, and they get to keep them, and then they, they, they went, came back and, and said. So yeah. state came so back and said no. So well, can so I respond to half of that though before we move on to the next piece? I think we do we do appreciate the ownership piece, right. and we're almost going to look at it like a textbook. Like if you will lose a textbook or damage a textbook, the family would have to replace or repair the textbook. We're looking at a similar proposition with the Chromebook. So, and again, we're still working out some of the details here, but there might be a couple points where a student gets a Chromebook, has it for four years or five years, turns it in, and maybe gets another Chromebook. Based on the life of the device. Will they be signing some type of uh, assumption of liability? There's a responsible use policy as well as, uh, yeah, basically, short answer, yes. We, I had, a, uh, we had another suggestion, right? I had another suggestion. What, and without looking at your proposal, um, so I have no idea how you're going to maintain them over the years, but I know we talked about that, that you guys would take care of that ongoing. And I thought we said without increasing your budget, but of course that's impossible. What if you just did the third grade? So when the fifth grade graduates, they take their Chromebooks to the sixth grade with them, and you buy Chromebooks for the second, third grade. So that way, everybody, as everybody moves up, you're only buying one year's worth of Chromebooks. Six through 12 misses out. No, they don't. They eventually get to 12. You're chasing it though, aren't you? Well, you bring you with you, so that the person no, that you're now you're saying current. I know what current. I know what he's saying. Okay. But what I'm but saying not, is the it. kid that <laughs> I know what he's saying. The, the, this is the Portuguese, okay? The kid, the kid that is in fifth grade that's reliant on Chromebooks, whereas the six through twelve are not because they don't have any to speak of. They only borrow them once in a while. Now takes his with him to the sixth grade. So now you only have to train the sixth grade teachers on how to use the stuff. Right, because you've already trained three, four, and five, and so the third grade, when the third grade comes in, you buy them Chromebooks. So eventually, everybody has Chromebooks through all the grades. 
the, the negative, one negative oh. impact there immediately, Mike, if you don't mind. Just Chris had his hand. Oh, sorry. Can I just make a quick point? If you do that, the kid in sixth grade is the one that really feels it because that kid will never own a Chromebook if you do that. Say that again? The kid in sixth grade will never have a Chromebook. Yeah, the first time. It's a one, it's a one time thing. No, no, it's a six year old. It keeps going. Right, but nobody else will either. No, if we, if we fund the program, they'll all have them in every grade. So they'll, the educational process will improve. Look at, look I think at there are a lot of methods to do it, Mark. I just said in your particular method, that the kid in the sixth grade is the one who's going to pay the price because well, he will six, never Six, seven, eight, six, but, six or twelve. But if you're in twelfth grade, you don't have a Chromebook for a year. It's not the end of the world. The kid in sixth grade would technically never it's have through fifty percent of their education with no Chromebook. So, with no, and I know that there the are a lot of different right. rollout so, methods. I'm so, just saying in your particular rollout method. You're, you're right. But so the, so the, the real issue then is what would your proposal be in order to take 600, uh, um, buy them for grades 6 mm -hmm. through 12, mm -hmm. so now you have 3 through 12, right? That's 8 grades, 9 grades, right? Milford Mass, 8 grades, everybody else 9 grades. How are you going to maintain almost 3,000 Chromebooks out of your budget? That's the big question, right? I mean, so if we would have... To maintain or replace? Stuff. Both. Well, what you plan well, you to do both. Forward? You're going to have all these Chromebooks for the entire school district. What's the plan every year after that? Right. Because it's not a disappearing uh, expense. That expense is there all the time. What happens going forward? How much of that budget now will be just in maintaining electronic tablets for the kids? And when and when they they become obsolete after three years. Well, four years, then you can't use them on the whiteboard because of all the software has been upgraded and everything else. How do you replace them? Well, the quick answer to that is that we're not buying desktops anymore. So we're moving to a much less expensive okay. device, and we are already budgeting the uh, Dell leases out of our school choice revolving account. So that those funds would stay with the Chromebooks. So let's quote you on that one, Kat. If Kathy. it's not going to be any expense <laughs> over here Kat anymore Kathy. because we have it over here. Kat. It would just shift. It's well, it's shifting the, it's shifting the expense it, it, from, from it's desktops. It's 3,000 Chromebooks at $300. But we wouldn't be replacing 3,000. No, yeah, it's just a rolling eventually you will. Eventually you will. But, over time. but that, that right. same funding source stays within school choice and Hopefully. just moves every year. Hopefully. And we're replacing every year X amount of Chromebooks. We, we, have, we have a schedule set up for not only the, the replacement of, of full grades, because we'll have to do that eventually, but also breakage, it's, it's all built in. Okay. Okay. We'd, we'd like that's to see something it. we could share we'll at that Wednesday meeting. We'd, yeah, we'd like that's to something. see it. That's yeah. something I don't have at my fingertips, so, but that's something we yeah. can share. Send, yeah. send it. Can you send it over to us when you get it so we can review it? And, and I think the town meeting would want to know that too. Oh, absolutely. They vote on an article to, to fund a capital expense. Yep. Absolutely. We right. can so, the, so then the other question is we all do capital in the fall. You want to spend all of this in the spring because it would put us basically a year behind if we put it in the fall because school starts Why? in august instead of in school right. so you want them at the beginning of school correct yes. correct that way and they so can be deployed we can train the teachers over the summer okay so what what if um what if you buy them out of your budget and we refund your budget in the fall if we don't have enough money in the capital appropriations dollars to fund everything they were supposed to fund. But what if it doesn't get What's why, why would you do that? What's the reasoning behind that? Why, why can't we just buy them and you not refund us? Well, because we have 1.5 million in, a, in capital appropriation numbers in the budget. And so what's a couple of months going to do? I'm sorry? What's a couple of months different going to do? Well, we don't spend any money in the spring. And in the fall, we see what our free cash number is. So we can afford more than the 1.5 million, John. Because <coughs> we pay that. But, uh, I didn't know that. That's Mark. No, no. That's fine. John. I mean, I, I think we're looking for it out of today's free cash. Um, and, and I understand it's not typical. We could be looking at, we could, we could be looking at it uh, in this free cash, but let me look and see what that number is. It's not, it's one, one. I think it's one four. One point two. Might be one two. No. Uh, okay. Okay. Unless you, unless you spend it might be a it might be one point. I thought it was one point seven, one point eight. No, no, it's closer to one point two, I thought. Um, we we can certainly look at that, John. It, that I, I just don't know what else I don't know what else is on the capital docket for this spring. 
that's where I thought we were going with this. And to look when we get closer to town meeting at you know what the snow and ice deficit is, and if we're going to take that mm -hmm. out of free cash, and whether or not you know today's free cash can mm -hmm. can, can cover all of that. Well, that would be the best thing to do, obviously. Can I ask a question about sure. the report? Does the report um, address at all every bit of new instruction and curriculum? I mean, all the new curriculum that you are working with right now, all of it has an online component that the kids can access independently on their Chromebooks. Does the report talk a little bit about the educational it impact? It does, yeah, it does. Um, we, we'll add the piece about the uh, replacement plan. That's in another document we can incorporate it. In I, I mean, you're going to have to, in 600K, you're going to have to present this to town meeting members. I mean, we can advocate for for it, but you guys are going to have to please stand up there and make your case. We had, just to give you an example, Mark, I was in a fourth grade classroom last week, and they were doing a grade, um, I shared this with some of the committee members, they are doing a grade um, activity, it was a social studies activity where they are looking at colonial uh, New England, Boston in particular, it was kind of an interactive map they were working on with the Chromebooks, and there was a writing exercise that was going to follow, and as we were walking into the classroom, the teacher asked um, the students, if you have a choice, you can either write the, um, you know, write, write the prompt using your English notebook, your social studies notebook, or you can use the Chromebook. And guess what percentage of kids chose their English paper and pencil notebook? One percent. Zero. Right. So that's the problem, is the way, and that was the discussion we had at our last meeting. Yeah. We reduce the cost of notebooks and textbooks, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's the goal long term, paper as well. Save the pencils. Right. I mean, so we had that discussion. <laughs> we, that Kevin, right? the we might even yeah. save some trees, though. <laughs> we, we, got a, we got a wonderful presentation last meeting from all the teachers at, at Woodland that utilize Chromebooks. And at the end of the presentation, the question was asked to this committee, what do you think? And my response was, well, they can't read, they can't write, they can't do math. They don't go to know how to go to the library. They use Chromebooks for everything. Basically, everything, all the answers are there. And, and it, in my, in the way it was presented, the way it was presented, Jen, mm -hmm. was all they have to do is look it up on the Chromebook. Welcome to education Well, today. I, I think one of the- But that's not educating, Mike, you know that. A piece of technology will never replace a teacher, but I also know that when I talked earlier about the small groups and the different needs, one of the things that we're using these Chromebooks for, at least in our school, is the teacher can be working with three kids over here, four kids can be working on a remedial reading program, ELLs can be working on a language acquisition program, so there are so many different ways that they can, we don't have bodies. All these kids need extra help, you don't have enough bodies, and, and so I understand they can that. help. I understand, that. I, understand that. I, I I just. Yeah, I mean, so I, we just go back to the old ways, okay? So all of us do because we're old. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead. I, I think the yeah. Kevin. I though I appreciate the story anecdotally. I think. I think that what has become very clear, and what we need to do a far better job of articulating, is not the educational experience enhancement that technology is having. It's what's the educational impact? What's the, how is having Chromebooks improving we asked that question the results time. of the school system? Not the educational impact, not the educational experience of our students, not the educational experience of our teachers. Great, by investing in this, our report card measures test scores, measures graduation rate. I gr and I, I can make that connection I think what we're being asked is, is we need to do a better job of communicating, hey, by doing this, we expect that it, this is going to help us by improving graduation rates. Here's data points that have come from districts that have gone to one-to-one. -one. Their score, test scores went up. Their graduation Scott, rates went know, up. Just to interrupt, we, you weren't at the last meeting. I was not. I apologize. We asked that, that exact yep. same question. So that's, that's what I think we've got to do a better job of. educational need or educational benefit of the Chromebook versus pen and pencil. Well, not well pencil I think the answer we got was that it doesn't necessarily affect those metrics. That oh, was it does. The no, the answer we got was <laughs> that we don't have a year's worth of, of, of information yet. Well, That's yeah, the answer the other, we what, I can, what I can say is that it will have a negative impact because in 2019, all of our state testing is going to online. And if our students don't have practice and familiarity with the devices and the, kind of the programs connected to those devices, it's definitely going to have a negative effect. The other thing I will say is that the students across the board of the park testing, comparing paper and pencil versus the electronic versions, the students that took the electronic version did worse in the initial run. And part of the theory behind that 
is that they didn't have a lot of experience using the tools connected to the testing. So they weren't familiar with the formatting. For example, like one, one great example is students didn't understand the text boxes expanded, so they would only write three or four lines for, for a question. So no. there's a number of them. So other Kevin, how many kids in wait, three wait, through five wait, have Mark, cell phone? Mark, hang on one second. Not many. So Kevin, what you Everybody. just said. Once you get to middle school, that number goes up exponentially, but not many at three through five. Kevin, what you just said is the data points that we're being asked to provide, right? And I and what I think we're struggling with is that's not how we're presenting our case. We're presenting our case of kids will choose going to the Chromebook over this versus exactly what you just said, which is when the kids have experience for greater than one school year of using technology, the park scores are increased. That's a data point that shows up in our report card. And Kevin's defense, he said the exact same thing at the last No, meeting. no, I know. And that, what I'm saying is, is, okay, and again, I, I think as we're building our case, though, I think that's, I think if we, if we continue to use those as the data points, as, a, as, as an alternative to, <coughs> again, I appreciate the anecdotal stories. The, at the end of the day, it's, it's what are the results? And I think we've got to continue to do a better job of articulating and, and being able to pinpoint those things. It's, it's something that we're being asked for in our budget as well. Hey, it's great, just show me. I'm just asking, to just peel the onion for me a little. And I think we've, we've, got, to, we've got to do a better, we're being asked to do a better job of communicating what those layers look like. Okay, with that, any other discussion? Mark? All good. All set? We have Motion. a meeting April. April 12th. No, no, that's FinCon meeting. Technology. I'm talking about this, this group. Oh. <coughs> we, have, we, have a, we do this monthly. We, yeah. We've agreed to, to meet on a monthly basis for budgeting, but to bring us up to speed on what you guys are doing, how we can help, okay. how you're doing with budgets. The next meeting is scheduled for the 10th of April. Um, I think we need to meet before that to finalize yeah, budgets. Yeah. Okay, so you got the... Uh, I, I think that... Um, you get the election on the 4th. Well, I don't think we should, I think we need to meet the end of March. End of March? Yeah. Okay. Right? What's the date of town meeting? Maybe the 27th? You want to see yeah, town meeting? Yeah, I would, I would say the 27th. May? Well, yeah. Two weeks from today? March, <coughs> March 27th? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I think April is starting to push the, the budget process significantly. We need to come back to, to the, to the FinCon with the number. March 27th on Monday? Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two weeks from today. <coughs> Same time? Six? I'm okay with six. Yeah. Can, can you guys make 27? Yes, I sir. Can. I Michael? I can. You can? Oh, you? Yep. Okay, so we'll have everybody go to four. Yeah. I wish you had so. Good? Yeah. Uh, okay, 27th, six o'clock. Here, here. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, ask, we'll post. You can post. We'll post. Okay. Motion for adjournment. Move. Scott, second by Jen. All in favor? Good. Thank you, team. Good night, everybody, thank and you. thank you. Thank you, Robert. Good luck with the snow.